Okay, hey everybody. Um, I'm at Coy Water Garden in Surrey this morning. Uh, it's my first trip that's more than about eight miles from home uh, since the COVID lockdown started. We're here with Ben and Andrew, and they're gonna show us around, first of all, the new Coy house um, that they've built here. This was finished just before um, the COVID lockdown started, so not many people have been around it yet. So we're gonna take a look around some of the fish are in there, have a word with them about the quarantine they do, and look around at some of the other facilities they've got here. So good morning gents. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so give us a little synopsis so, of what this core house is. Yeah, this is a new core house, this is our fish house eight. Uh, we've got, basically this is our quarantine facility and growing on. It is open to customers, but it's by appointment only. Uh, everything that comes into country, we have triple heat cycle. And it's every single fish house is fully defrorated. Ben will now tell you about this one. That's <laughs> we going now. Okay, so foot baths on the way in, of course. So uh, these are basically all fish that have uh, undergone their quarantine procedure. So in the ponds now, there's basically a mixture of breeders uh, compared to when they initially come in, they're all separated breeder by breeder. Um, each uh, system has got a uh, bottom drain in the middle, a uh, four inch mid feed and a gravity fed skimmer going into the Oazi uh, coffee drum filter uh, with their K3 moving bed on the end. Um, and we've got two 20,000 litre Aquamax pumps pumping down our Quill Water Garden triple towers and they house the Plucky House Media and uh, also some volcanic rock as well. Is that genuine bacteria house media? Yes. Yeah, probably more yeah. sorry, bacteria yeah. house media. Uh, as you can see, basically in ponds like this, uh, this is basically heated to 25 degrees, well on days like today, once we get a nice lot of free heat. Uh, the fish in here are generally two-year-old fish uh, with two Dainichi showers in there. You've got a Dainichi shower, this one, which in the autumn when we bought it was 18 months old, 62 centimetres. There's a Dainichi Kahaka as well there. Uh, and obviously these, are, uh, we've got the fish feeders on the pond, so these will get fed eight times a day. And we've got- Interesting fish feeders, a bit more about those. Well, those are actual fish feeders. We actually bought those a few years ago, just more of an actual, uh, to, to actually try them out. They've actually got like an air pump attached to them. So rather than just dropping the actual food in, uh, as they turn on, it actually disperses the actual food across the surface. Obviously, so we don't get a problem with the actual fish all gathering into one area and obviously causing damage. So it's, it's one we're actually sampling at the minute, but it's a more so a, a fish farm kind of uh, okay. fish feeder as opposed to a hobbyist. And what size is this one? Uh, this one here is uh, oh, 12 yeah. and a half tons, so 2,600 gallons. The ponds are all very heavily filtered, so stocking wise, we could put probably 40 or 50 litres in those and they would still comfortably put on a probably 6, 7 inch growth during the course of the season. And uh, each pond, we also run a, a, just a trickle in, trickle out system, uh, so obviously, so it's just always turning over the actual water. We aim to, this is about to be 5%, say 5%? 5 to 10% a week. Okay. The top feed there is a borehole feed, the bottom one is mains water. So this house we're predominantly trying to use the borehole water, which is uh, coming up 90 metres from the ground below us. And, uh, although at present obviously we've got all the pumps and everything turned off, we've got two uh, 40 litres a minute high blow 40s in the actual pond and another 40 litres a minute high blow in the filter. There's 120 litres of air a minute, which is very important to see in this kind of temperature. So this is the main pond here, this is 30 tonne, six and a half thousand gallons. It's not particularly deep, 1.2 metres, we feel is sufficient. Again, this has got a double filtration system. So we've got two coffee M ORs of drums and moving beds and four triple towers along the back. Again, genuine backing house media and some oyster shells as well, just to buffer the pH when they stopped. It's heavy. 
In this pond at the moment is probably 50 koi, ranging from about 55 to 90 centimetre. As you can see, we hold a lot of varieties of fish, not just go sinker. Although we prefer go sinker. <laughs> Some of the uh, sandstone larger fish in here are fish basically grown on from the side so over the last one or two years. Uh, generally speaking, when we buy fish in Japan, we have to consider it good enough that if it doesn't sell, it has to be good enough to actually grow on. So obviously anything that doesn't sell, obviously at the start of the year, generally we just put it into the grain and pumps and then uh, obviously just feed it up and uh, to reintroduce them to sell later on in October time. We think it's important as well that fish reach their actual growth they should be at. So we've been buying a two or three year old at least to put on that four, five, six inches, 15 cm a year. If it stagnates at the smaller sizes, it affects the fish long term. So after a period of time, we do spread the fish out, feed them heavily, and get them back to their growth potential they should have reached in Japan. In terms of breeders, anything, any particular favourite breeders? Uh, my, my, well, it depends obviously actual variety wise. Um, I quite like obviously like we had some really beautiful shows from like Hoshkin and Okahaku from Hoshkin, which basically we've actually grown on really nicely over the last two or three years. Um, and what would you say is your? I like Hasegawa. Hasegawa's new bloodline mixes that have been done by body are very nice. Nagashima koi. I think the shows have a lovely deep sea meat and DP in the uh, UK waters. Other than that, we buy from many other breeders, from Dainichi, Hirai, smaller breeders as well. And obviously, uh, lots of breeders using better bloodlines these days within their fish. So uh, we're happy to select Tatigoi from them as well. Fuchi for the Jaku is actually a favourite now from Life the Fuji was out of the jacket very good. Unfortunately, the ones purchased this year will be sold. She didn't know the time that we got. And these are the two points to like smaller men? Uh, yep, yeah, so these are the two ponds. Uh, they're nine and a half tons, which is over 2,000 gallons. Uh, they've still got the same actually amount of filtration as the actual larger ponds there, really. So obviously they're the automatic drum filters, so they uh, generally obviously get back washed throughout the day while we're obviously in the shops or not obviously on other jobs. Uh, we'll take you down to the, the engine room at the minute, which is in this uh, central console here. We'll go down out to all the pumps for heat exchangers and all the, the manifolds and things of that little house. Ben, why don't you take the camera down there and show people around? <laughs> if you trust me, it right looks a mess. Right here, the down there. So uh, this is the uh, basically the engine room as it were. So basically all of the uh, the pumps and the heat exchangers, and all the actual equipment situated down here. Uh, you'll know that everything is done on the uh, double union ball valves uh, and split couplings. So if you see we ever have any issues with any equipment, if anything needs changing or maintaining, it's basically easily like taken off and obviously adjusted. Um, you see you've got the uh, four inch manifolds there to purge the waste uh, as well as obviously going into the actual drum filters basically you can just see through there this is generally quite a low maintenance system uh, however we try and purge the drains at least twice a week really just to uh, get rid of any of the debris that's built up as soon as it accumulates so just wandering over to one of the other koi houses There are plenty. So this house here, Mark, is a tossai, basically larger tossai house. These five ponds were built about a year ago. And really the tossai ponds that we quarantine in, which we'll see shortly, are quite small and they're not really for long term. So once they've gone past their initial three month quarantine, we spread them out and give them a little bit more time. So this was built after my last visit. This was built one a year, every year at this house. This was built last year. The one over there? The one's this year, the one last year in you here two yeah, years yeah, ago. Yeah, which has been Yeah, so every year, with ten, year, 10 years on this site, we have eight fish houses, three lakes, and three large growing on ponds outside. That's roughly one a year. <laughs> <laughs> we take you through to the fish house four.
Uh, uh, so uh, this here, uh, this is uh, Fish House 5. As you'll see here, this is where we score obviously most of the food that generally gets fed eight times a day. Uh, we do a basically a mixture of the uh, sake and early growth, sake colour, uh, along with uh, show and grow food. So we generally go through quite a lot of food, I'd probably say, probably 50, 50 kilos a week maybe, something like that, so plus. Uh, and again, these fish, because they've all undergone their quarantine procedures, it's just a multitude of different basically breeders basically mixed together now. Um, as we walked in, we just basically turned up. We've got basically every uh, appliance in here is on separate kind of trips. So if a basically UV were to blow, it might basically trip out the UVs, but then the main pumps will still be running. Obviously, if the pump circuit basically went, we've got air and we've also got emergency air. So we've basically got all, all basically bases covered, really especially during the summer months when it's very, very warm in here, the fish haven't got long, if obviously the actual sure. thing uh, power was to go, so we've just got it all, all backed up. So the uh, fish in there, we've got a lot of, uh, these are all Nisai from uh, a multitude, we've got some from Takahashi, uh, some from Marusaka, uh, Takano, a bit of Baromos. And I think there's some Kodakoshki in there as well. So yes, you'll know on here, see for instance like this, is that is one independent kind of system there. Um, so you run a bottom drain, you run a solid handling pump that draws off at the bottom drain and then pumps up to the filter at the back. You'll notice obviously it's got its individual heater there and UV. So that effectively is one system. So when the fish get brought in, that'll basically be one breeder in there. And then they go through their three heat cycles just with that one breeder. And only obviously when they've, they've undergone that, then we basically start to mix them after that, different breeders. So yeah. I think on site, I think we've got about 80 ponds in total. 80 individually heated and filtered ponds here. In terms of your quarantine, as well as doing the heat cycling, do you have a standard routine that you go through in terms of medication, or is it ad hoc depending with what no, you well find? No, it's not basically, basically, when the actual fish come in, we have them one ounce of salt per gallon, and then proflavin and hemisulfate. Obviously, that just generally attends to like the little knocks and bumps and transit. Uh, shortly after, basically, when they actually come in, then we generally try and, after, after a week or so, just flush the salt out and then we carry out skin scrapes. And so then parasite treatments are carried out as and when required. The most important thing because of the duration is when we heat cycle, we heat them up usually after about a week. We keep them there for two and a half weeks in the first cycle. We then bring them down over a week. And then after that, they have a cold week where we usually 12 or 14 degrees. Then we start to bring them up for the second cycle, which is touched shorter at 14 days, the third cycle at 10. You can see that process of coming up slowly and down slowly, it actually takes a month, hence why the quarantine period for fish that are born in November, we don't actually have them finished quarantine till March and then they're released generally April to bond all month for customers. Okay, very good. We've just got to take it from here. So again, this fish house, we don't overuse the quarantine. It's not great biosecurity wise, although with higher walls, so this is usually more stocked. But this fish house is used more as a quarantine procedure. So for instance, you'll see here on the wall mark, this is how the quarantine is carried out. And this is the document that's been shown better, and that's why you'll see in our system, that has to be the system is actually the best in the UK. So we've got number one status and the highest category on that. Also, if we have fish arrive at the airport, we've got the status 23, where we're making that fish undocumented because they consider it safe and it's going to be a risk if the document's going to take off. And you've just got one larger pond here, which is right now that's got some stock fishing. A bit noisy in here, the pumps up and off. So this here mark is fish house free. This is one predominantly designed for one box of tossi. Uh, there's seven small ponds in here and when we're selecting high quality tossi, these come over with the other shipments where they go for the same quarantine procedure for three months before they're then mixed and turned into other ponds. 
At the moment there's not too many fish in here, these are mainly sole fish away from the customs collection. This is one of the original fish houses built 12 years ago. This has got five ponds. These ponds, before we actually quarantine the fish, are all every pond here before shipments arrive. The caustic solids and they're totally sterilised. After that they drain and dry for a few days, then they're filled back up. Now after probably a week the shipment will arrive because there's no bacteria in these filters at all. So how we basically control is we judge, we don't overly test the water and check on there, we're purely looking at the health of the fish. We have lots of oxygen, again you've got an emergency airline, a main air, trickle towers because they establish, and also we believe in stoning filters because it matures much quicker in four to six weeks. We also would have a drip feed on a system which literally will just drip feed very slowly and that's how we would run those. So these systems here, although this is only four tonne, 880 gallons, we would normally put 70 to 100 litres on there for the period of quarantine. If our losses exceed half a percent, we consider it awful. We don't expect to lose any fish at all. This is a uh, fish house six. This one. Uh, this is, contains uh, three ponds. Uh, this is uh, obviously with a natural glass roof. We find it very good for like drying on metallic fish such as like harawaki, um, obviously the harawaki like Yamato, Kikasui, obviously because the actual lust stuff basically comes up really nicely in the actual drying environment. Uh, once again, I mean these are some two-year-old gosanki in here that we're going on. Uh, we've got the. Uh, the koi water garden triple towers in there and these are basically full of the genuine uh, uh, BHM media. Each of these systems basically has two bottom drains and it just feeds uh, the Awazi drum filter down the end there and then basically comes back onto the, uh, onto the triple towers. So the triple towers are the only form of uh, biological filtration on these. But again, in the height of summer, these get fed eight times a day and obviously have a trickle in, trickle out. But uh, so due to again like the heat in here, we get some very good growth rates in here. Even in what's considered a relatively small environment, we can still achieve very similar growth rates to what they do in Japan. Here, Mark, just some toss on the customer selected fish, and after five or six months, I've been on the website. We just selected some to grow on and to bring up to further size. The customers inquire how these fish was doing, having to let them go. And it's just a place we don't like to see fish stagnating on stone on smaller sizes when uh, they really need to get enough to fill full by the end of the year. It is warm, the Sumi and most of the shoe owners have now gone down. So you stay on the skin of the combat and base plane. The shows in here in Nagashima, the shows at Zuri's are from Kobayashi, and the Kimmy Shiro at Zuri's are from the airport. You'll know if we're basically quarantining in here, everything is totally separate. Obviously, when we're quarantining, we've got these curtains basically throughout, so even like basically drips from everything's totally separate. And obviously, in the actual quarantine phase, sort of three months they're in here, only Andrew and myself basically the only people that are permitted to come in here. Basically, we don't let any customers or anyone out of here in my turn quarantine. Thank you very seriously. More to explore the toss side. These are empty bombs we selected some last week. Some nice shoe accessories, giving the cheevers, and taking trap too. Now, 
fish house. This fish house one, as we call it, originally it didn't have a building. The problems with that body carbon that covers over the top. In here again, this fish that are still on the website, there's a few sold fish in here as well. But again, we're at the time of year where the fish need to grow on and reach their potential growth. The dominant in this fish house at the moment is called Lisa. We used to have all the bigger fish in here, so now we need to be a new fish house. So again, with this, this is more of a conventional type filter. These fish run eight feet a day, so it goes into vortexes in a bag jet pack before they go onto the chicken towers. The big one at the end has a drum filter on it. Uh, at the end of the year, this is the new project, is to get this one refurbished and back up to date. Because you can see on the paper feed today, in the sort of farm from all school local areas during the summer months. And then we can work, it doesn't have a lot of fish, it's not an issue. Uh, the main problem is the diamond space here. Uh, they're quite happy with clean waters. The problem is that UVs, but in the dry and on the houses, we generally don't clean the bowls. We don't have a problem with that. I have to confess there was a slightly ulterior motive to my visit to Koi Water Garden this morning. I have been discussing some goshi with Ben and when Andrew bowled this one up and it produced the sperm that I was looking for, needless to say it was coming home. Okay, so just made the short journey back from from Clearwater Garden in Surrey. Uh, it's just about 45 minutes drive from there. And gosh, you go purchase, been loaded about 15 minutes in the tank behind me. So time to take it out, pop in some clean water, and have a good look at it. All right, here he is. Uh, Nisai, bred by Cano Koi Farm, of course. Cano Koi Farm, one of the absolute stars of Goshki breeding. And the Ginrin male we have as well is also, of course, a Cano fish. And they're going to go with the Kawakami female. So uh, the Benny's not clean, Benny plate, it's not the clean phone Benny. But he's got nice defined sashi and kiwa. Nice, strong red coloration. Nice skin. So, I'm happy that he adds an extra component, an extra component to, to the spawning. Now, big decision comes what day we choose to do the spawning. So, carefully looking at weather forecasts as to how we can get things arranged. And I'm hoping probably at the moment my thought is that Friday morning the parents will be put together um, and then maybe Friday night if we're lucky or Saturday night the spawning will actually take place. Anyway, so we get him into the tank uh, with his fellow males and get him settled in. 